Today we're going to talk about the concept of acceleration. Now that we know how to find velocity at any given point in time, we can do it at many points in time. I've drawn tangents t equals 1 second, 2 seconds, 4 seconds on the graph to the left. The important thing to notice is those lines are not parallel, so they have different slopes, implying the object had a different velocity at each of those moments. It probably isn't a shock to you that something that can have different velocities at different times. We quantify that by considering the, considering the rate at which velocity changes, which gets the technical term acceleration. Acceleration is defined analogously to velocity. For instance, the average acceleration between the start and end of an interval is given by a sub average is delta v over delta t. This is in parallel to the idea that v average is delta x over delta t. Notice that a average is not delta v average over delta t. It's the change in the instantaneous velocity over time. Since velocity is measured in units of meters per second and time is measured in seconds, we see the acceleration is measured in meters per second per second, m over s over s. But because that's incredibly awkward to write or to say, we usually perform an algebraic trick, and we say that meters per second over seconds, well, the way that we divide one fraction by another fraction is take the first fraction, keep the first fraction, invert the second fraction, and multiply. So we have meters per second times 1 over seconds, which is meters over seconds times seconds. And then anything times itself we write as a square. So we end up with the traditional unit of meters per second squared. We're not really squaring the seconds. You don't have to get your head around what does it mean to have a time that's actually an area and so on. It's just an algebraic trick, but it's a universal one. Also, don't let that let make you lose sight of what's going on. If an acceleration is 4 meters per second squared, that means that every second the velocity increases by 4 meters per second. Or if the acceleration was minus 9 meters per second squared, that means that the velocity is reduced by 9 meters per second every second. The following drawings represent strobe or flash photographs of a ball moving in the direction of the arrow. The circles represent the positions of the ball at succeeding instants of time. The time interval between successive positions is the same for all cases, and assume that all accelerations are constant. Rank the magnitude of the acceleration based on the drawings. So we look here and we say, well, one of them is really easy, so I'm going to do that one first. In C, the distance traveled between flashes is the same, so the velocity is the same, so the acceleration here is zero. That's going to be, C is going to be our last case ones. If we then look at the others, well, the others seem to be, it's hard to tell, and I don't think you should judge things from scaling, but it looks to me that this distance here is more than that distance here, and that this gap is more than this gap. So basically, at any given moment, the, the velocity is larger and changing by more. So I think that um, it looks to me that we have that d is the most. It looks like a and b have the same magnitude, although a is negative and b is positive, and then c has less. So I think it looks something like this. But really, without care for scaling, it'd be hard to distinguish all of them from each other. The fact that in case A, it's getting slower, and in case B, it's getting faster, doesn't change the magnitude, which is what they asked about. As with velocity, we can then talk about instantaneous acceleration, the acceleration at a particular moment in time, as the limit of the acce average acceleration. That is, that A is the limit of delta, becomes, delta T becomes 0 of delta V over delta T, which, if you're playing the home game in calculus, means that this should be dV dt. And if you really want to show off, it's also d squared x dt squared. We won't use any of those in this class, but you might recognize them. If you don't recognize them, it's fine, by the way. It's just a thing, notation that comes out of calculus. Again, this requires calculus to go any further, really. It's useful to think of instantaneous accelerations as an average acceleration measured over a very short time interval. Um, you might wonder, can we then talk about changes in acceleration? And we can, but we won't. It turns out that, in general, it will be more useful to use a whole different method of physical reasoning once the accelerations are not constant. So we'll, we'll revisit this when we talk about forces. If the velocity is not constant, it changes. Sort of, duh. <laughs> That means we could make a plot of the velocity as a function of time, a so-called velocity plot, or a VT plot. In that kind of plot, the acceleration will be found as the slope of the tangent line. Notice the change here. On a VT plot, the acceleration is the slope. But on an XT plot, 
the uh, slope is the velocity. So you can't just say like just you can't associate velocity with slope or acceleration with slope because slope is a tool that depends on which kind of graph you're on. Keep that in mind. Uh, maybe useful, or maybe not, but the analogy is acceleration is to velocity as velocity is to position. The graphs below show the velocity versus time for boats traveling along a, straight, along a straight, narrow channel. The scales on both axes are the same for all of these graphs. In each graph, a point is marked with a dot, and we want to rank the magnitude of the acceleration of the boat at the point indicated. So we want, since these are all VT graphs, and we want the acceleration, that is the slope. And these are all lines, so we don't even specify where, just the slope of the line. So if we look over here, by the way, slope, um, if we want things, if we have slope of lines, things that are parallel have the same slope. So immediately see that A and B, since those are parallel lines, have the same slope. And although it's less obvious, it turns out that C and D are the same. So we'll have A is B, and we'll have C is D. And then if we compute, if we look at E and F, E rises one over six units of time, while F falls one over six units of time, but they will turn out to be equal as well. So all we have to do is figure out who's larger. By the way, again, because we want the magnitude, which would be the absolute value of the slope. Um, and then we can just figure it out for each of those. So if we say, if we look at um, case A, it rises three in the course of six, so it has a slope of one half. Whereas uh, e, uh, C falls four in the space of three, so it has a slope of minus four thirds. And then E rises one in the space of six units of time, so one sixth. So actually, we find that my instantaneous thing had been wrong. We really should have had um, something that looked more like this C equals D which is greater than A is equal to B, which is greater than E equal to C, uh, E equal to F. Speeding up and slowing down. I actually don't really like the term speeding up and slowing down because they imply up and down, and that would be particularly confusing when we talk about things which can, in fact, move up and down. But speeding or get is the same as getting faster. Speeding up is the same as getting faster, which means increasing the speed, not the velocity. So if we have an object going like this, it might do something like that, and that's getting faster. But if it were heading the other way, so we have a thing which goes starts here and then goes faster. It's going faster, even though its velocity, if we take that plus is this way, then here we have v positive and getting more positive, and here we have v negative and getting more negative. It's not getting larger. V is getting smaller. It's getting more negative. But its absolute value is getting larger. So we have to remember that getting faster or getting slower refers to the speed. If the velocity and acceleration point in the same way, the object gains speed. And if the, the velocity and acceleration point oppositely, the object loses speed. And that's the best way to remember what the sign of acceleration means. If it's tending to make you go faster, then your acceleration has the same sign as your velocity, and vice versa. To reiterate, an object can move right or left or up and down while either speeding up or slowing down. Again, don't like speeding up or slowing down, but either getting faster or getting slower. Whether an object, object is slowing down has negative acceleration depends on the direction of motion. And they illustrate um, both cases here. The object <coughs> in the, on the left is moving to the right, so its velocity is positive, and it's getting faster, so its acceleration is positive. And notice that if we were to graph that, that would be a thing which starts above the axis and gets further from the axis, and therefore has a positive slope. But, and this is important, if the object were heading to the left, but getting slower, then its graph would be the one shown on the right. And so we see that the slope of this is still positive because the getting slower means the acceleration is opposed to the velocity. We make this case because sometimes when you first learn algebra, they give you distance equals rate times time problems and things like that. And someone convinces you that acceleration means negative uh, that deceleration is negative acceleration or that acceleration means slowing down and neither of those are true. Deceleration means that your speed is getting smaller, getting closer to zero. To illustrate the other possible cases, an object which is moving to the right but getting slower would have the graph that's shown 
and the slope of that graph is negative, so this is a negative acceleration. This is the case that people will usually call deceleration is negative acceleration. It is deceleration, but not because the acceleration is negative, but because the velocity curve is getting closer to zero. And then the last case is moving to the left but getting faster, in which case the velocity curve gets further from zero, but the slope here is still negative. All right, the motion di diagram shows a particle that is slowing down. What is the sign of the acceleration? Take a second and think. Pause the video if you need to. All right, here they kind of gave the game away. Um, we're given that positive x is this way, and x a points in that direction, so a is positive. You could also look at this and say, well, the velocity is pointing negative, and they told us that it's slowing down. Since it's slowing down, the acceleration must be opposite to the velocity. If the velocity is negative, the opposite of that is positive.